So this setup demonstrates two things. One is we want to understand what is a quarter wavelength um, antenna. And then the other uh, point we want to demonstrate is in a system where we know uh, is radiating energy caused by a cable, let's say, where shall we put uh, a ferrite, um, you know, um, so, so as to suppress the noise? So this um, setup demonstrates these two points. So first, let's have a look at the uh, setup. We have, again, uh, both the oscilloscope and the spectral analyzer running at the minute. We have a small log periodic antenna set up pointing towards this direction. Right now, without switching on anything, this antenna basically picks up the ambient noise. So the ambient noise is caused by the LED lights in the room and um, the local radio station. Okay. Then we are going to generate some noise using a basic functional generator such as this one. As you can see, we set the frequency to be 250 kilohertz and is a 50% duty ratio square wave. Note that we have a peak to peak voltage of four volts. And interesting is the rise time and fall time are set as three nanoseconds. As we discussed before, it doesn't really matter you know, the switching frequency, whether you have one megahertz switching frequency or 10 kilohertz switching frequency. What matters most is how fast, how quickly you switch on the, uh, the waveform. So in this case, three nanoseconds is a pretty fast rise time, uh, rise edge. So we expect if we connect an antenna to the output of this uh, function generator, it should radiate quite efficiently. Now, let's measure the length of this uh, antenna. So it's close to 60 centimeters long, right? So if you do a quick math, 60 centimeter long antenna should radiate most efficiently at about 120 megahertz, okay? So if I switch on the uh, function generator, immediately you can see there's a peak at 123 megahertz in this case, 123 megahertz. So if I switch off, how about we do a trace, mark a one, let's say maximum hold. So this represents the ambient noise really. Now we, we, we view it and then trace two, maximum hold, and I'll switch it on and then you can see where it, this uh, antenna radiates the most. It's at 123 megahertz, okay? Right, so let's say this as well, the so view. And then we enable trace three, clear right. And then we put, yeah. Okay, so as we explained, for a quarter wavelength antenna, the impedance at this point is rather low, whereas the impedance at this point is very high. What it means is, if we measure the current traveling on this antenna, we should expect to see more current at this end than this end. So how, how can we prove this? We have a current probe, the RF current probe, which is capable of picking up noise from um, hundreds of kilohertz to, in this case, 800 megahertz, okay? And we connect the RF current probe to the 50 ohm input of an oscilloscope. And let's see what happens here. So if I put it on here, you can see the level of the noise on the oscilloscope, not much. Notice that we have 50 millivolts per division, and this is about peak to peak, I would say 40 millivolts. And as I slowly move down a long line, you can see that the amplitude of the RF current picked up by the current probe increase. As we expected, as I move down, 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 towards almost the output here. And you can see with 50 millivolts per division, the peak to peak voltage is almost 10 times of what we measured here. 
right now is almost occupying the, the full scale of the uh, uh, oscilloscope. So clearly, as we knew, the current really, we expect lots of current here and small current here, indicating very low impedance here, which we know 50 ohms, high impedance here, probably 377 ohms or so. Okay, so now we know that for a quarter wavelength antenna, the current really is here and little current is here. For a ferrite to work very efficiently, we need to put the ferrite where the most current, the largest current is, or the least impedance is. So in this case, we expect a ferrite would be very effective if we put it here, then here, okay? So to demonstrate that, again, we're gonna look at the spectral analyzer. Now we look at trace three, which is clear white at the moment. I have a 31 material, which works very, very well at 100 megahertz, because at 100 megahertz, we expect 388 ohms, okay? So if I put here, you can see um, the, uh, the result of the uh, spectral analyzer. I probably didn't get any atten uh, attenuation. Let's say about maybe two or three dB the most. But as I slowly move the uh, ferrite here at the uh, maximum currencies, where the maximum currencies and least impedances. Look at that. We, we, we have managed to suppress a noise about 20 dB. So really, we're talking about 2 dB against 20 dB difference, simply by moving the, the ferrite in a different location. So hopefully, this nice setup demonstrates the two points we want to make. And by learning this, by this setup, you should appreciate how radiation happens and if given a ferrite or any sort of um, uh, uh, filter, let's say, a common mode choke, where in a system you should put the filter in, in a system.